What's going on everyone? This video is on threading versus multiprocessing. I get a lot of questions on these and people are always wondering what the difference is and when you should use one over the other, so let's just sort all that out right now. So both the threading and multiprocessing module in Python, they both aim to do kind of the same thing and that's to do a number of things at the same time. However, the way the threading module goes about it and the way the multiprocessing module goes about it is very different. So here I've written five high-level points for the threading module and five high-level points for the multiprocessing module. And all the points relate to one another. So the first point on threading relates to the first point on multiprocessing. So the first point on the threading side is that a new thread is spawned within the existing process, whereas on the multiprocessing side, a new process is started independent from the first process. This is an important distinction on the multiprocessing side because it's like you have two Python programs running at the exact same time. The second point is that starting a thread is going to be faster than starting a process. Starting a process is going to be slower than starting a thread. And there's going to be more memory involved when you start a process versus starting a thread. So the third point is memory. On the threading side, memory is going to be shared by every single thread that gets created in that process. On the multiprocessing side, memory is not shared between the processes. However, when you start a new process with multiprocessing, you do get access to a copy of the data from the parent. Now note that I said you get access to a copy, not you get a copy. On the threading side, you're going to have to use mutexes to synchronize your access to data. On the multiprocessing side, because you have your own address space, you don't actually have to use mutexes. However, you still do have to use mutexes if your new spawned child process uses new threads. And finally, the global interpreter lock, and this is a big one. On the threading side, you get one global interpreter lock for all the threads. On the multiprocessing side, you get one global interpreter lock for each process. For those that don't know what the global interpreter lock is, it's basically a mechanism in Python that ensures that there's never more than one thread of execution for the Python interpreter at any given moment. On the threading side, the global interpreter lock effectively makes it so the Python interpreter cannot do two things at once. On the multiprocessing side, the global interpreter lock is one for every process, therefore you can truly do things in parallel because you have multiple processes. We're going to look at a practical example of the global interpreter lock in action here in a second. Now I've written two pieces of code here. The left one uses threads and the right one uses processes. If you look, they're basically identical with the exception of on threads, I do from threading import thread, and on processes I do from multiprocessing import process. Besides that, one side says thread, one side says process, and then I create a new thread by using thread there, and then over here I do process instead. And the purpose of this program is to calculate 4 million square root numbers per core on my computer. Both threads and process are started the same way. Basically, you use thread or process, you specify a target, and the target's going to be a method that it should call at the beginning of that thread or the beginning of the process. And then from there, it's simply started in a non-blocking manner. And then join is called, which waits until the thread to finish or waits until the process to finish. So this call will block. The reason I need to use join is because if I didn't use join, the program would just reach the end and then exit. Okay, so I'm going to open two terminals. One terminal is going to be an output of all the CPU usage. And then the other terminal, we're going to actually run these two programs. So the first one we'll run is the one that uses threads. So we'll do Python 3.6 threads. Now I'm going to run it, and it's going to say it's starting all 32 threads. However, if you look over here on my terminal, you're going to see that 109% CPU used. So there's, there's only one core worth of work being done here, but there's 32 threads. You know, why doesn't that say 3200% CPU? And that's because of the global interpreter lock. And now we'll do the multiprocessing version. Python 3.6 processes. Now you notice when I start processes, it still does the 32, but something different happens here. Now I have all these processes running, all these Python 3.6 processes, and they're all running at 100% CPU. And that's because each one has its own global interpreter lock, so it can do 32 cores worth of work at the same time. And I just want to talk briefly about when you would use one over the other. So a good usage of threading is, imagine you're running an e-commerce site and you're selling t-shirts. So they go and they pick out the t-shirts they want, they type in all the credit card information, and then they click the charge button. So probably at least three things are going to happen when they click that charge button. The first thing that's going to happen is it's going to try to charge the card. The second thing that's going to happen is it's going to log all the information in the database for you. And the third thing that's probably going to happen is it's going to send them a receipt in their email. 
So note that two of those three things are going to take a little time. To charge somebody's card typically takes a couple seconds, and then to send an email typically takes one or two seconds. And during that time, the user is going to be waiting on the screen, waiting for all this to finish. So here's where threads come in. Of course, they do have to wait to see when their card is charged because it could decline, and you got to tell the user that. But if it succeeds, why not take the portion where it sends the email and place that in another thread? If you do that, you can return a message to your user saying order was successful. Meanwhile, in the background, there's an email being sent out. So you might be thinking to yourself now, wait a minute, engineer man, didn't you say that two things could not occur at the same time on threading? Yes, I did. So let's explain how that's possible in this case. So while threading cannot do things in parallel, it can do things concurrently, meaning it can go back and forth between things whenever it has the time. So in this case, the email operation will get started. It'll get to the point where it actually makes the network request, which of course is going to happen out, outside of the context of the interpreter. And then when it does that, the global interpreter lock is released for that operation, and then it's allowed to go back to telling the user order successful. Once the email is sent successfully, then the global interpreter lock is reacquired by that thread, and then the rest of the operation finishes. So on the multiprocessing side, a good use for that would be if, imagine you have to do some mathematical operations on, say, 2 million records of data. What you could do is you could divide all that data up for each core and then process it independently. And by independently, I mean if you have 32 cores, you could do 1 32nd of the work per process. And then you can just use process.join to wait for all the results, and then you can aggregate up the results, and it should speed up what you're doing by a factor of 32. And that's threading versus multiprocessing. I hope that cleared up all the confusion, and I hope you learned something today. See you next video.